www.lapprobate.com. I'm Bill Groves, the LA probate expert. And we have this gathering every week on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Pacific time live to talk about probate real estate for investors, new and old, real estate agents, petitioners, attorneys. We'll talk about how we can make money and build our business by being a service to other people in probate real estate. So glad to have you all here today. You can come in live on the Zoom, uh, which uh, if you register at probateweekly.com, we'll send you, we'll register you for that. Or if you're on our social media, you're welcome to jump in there as well. Um, you can also, if you're watching this live on YouTube or Facebook, uh, put questions there and they should come through where I can catch them and respond to them as well. But if you really want to participate, turn off your camera and talk to us. And I always tell people, the more you participate, the more you have service, the more money you make. My first coach was Zig Ziglar. He said, you can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. So jump in the call. If you have some questions, be, uh, just know other people have the same question. And by asking that, you're giving me a chance to answer it in a hopefully an interactive way. It will help the other guys. So focus on that, being a service, and we all can, can profit. We can all do real well. So glad to have you on the call. Um, let me just see real quick, Probit Weekly. We have our, our graphic up. Fantastic. So today's topic, I generally talk about um, uh, what I call the 11 ways to make money in probate real estate. And, um, but there are some marketing basics that you have to manage in order to be successful uh, in any sales. And certainly that's true also in probate real estate. So I thought today I would review what I'm going to call the marketing basics. And this is true if you are an investor. This is true if you are a real estate agent. This is true if you're an attorney, an accountant in the space, photographer. These are basic fundamentals that are always true about uh, any business that are particularly true in probate real estate. And I'll explain to you how they fit in here. So just real quick, I want to say that probate is not a quick fix. You've got to work hard. You've got to be consistent. You've got to follow up. and You have to learn and improve regularly like anything in life to be successful. And I'm Bill Gross. I'm your, uh, bro uh, your host in probate real estate today. Um, and I'm a broker associate with eXp Realty in Los Angeles, California. Just a quick bio on me. I've been in real estate since 1986. I've been in mortgage and real estate. Now I'm exclusively in real estate. I've been in sales, management, and ownership, which I think gives me some unique perspective. I've been focused on probate real estate full-time for the last three years, actually. I've done probate over my career, but about three years ago, I focused 100% of all my lead generation in this space. I've taken a bunch of certifications. I think I've taken them all that I'm aware of. Uh, five of them I can identify. But I think each one adds something different. And so I tell people, you're not an expert because you took one class. Uh, you're an expert because you decide to be an expert and do what you need to do daily to maintain that status. Um, I've done in-depth research. I had the, uh, brought the California code on probate real estate. I take that with me when I go to court. Uh, and I want to say I've seen more court confirmation sales in Los Angeles over the last three years than any agent, attorney, or judge. I used to go every day and see at least one. And so in the last three years, I've probably seen 400 or so court sales. I don't think there's anybody who's even close to that number in terms of experience. So before we start, let's talk about the fundamentals. And today, that's what we're going to talk about. Mindset before money. What I want to say is in any transformation, 90% is mindset. You've got to get right about what it takes to make money and your commitment to doing it. One of the great trainers I listened to once said, when you want to make money as bad as you want to breathe, you'll be successful. But more than that, you have to come from the right space. And so my first coach was Zig Ziglar. He taught me that any, uh, you can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. So mindset coming from service is critical in this business, I think in real estate in general, and I also would say in any business. So your mindset's really critical. Also, know that our job is the hard work that sometimes people think of probate as being an easy way to get double lands and flips and blah, blah, blah. It's not the easy way for anything. I was just on the phone with an attorney a uh, half hour ago talking about his hardest case ever, and I was sharing my hardest case ever. So you want to look for people with problems and solve them. That's how we get paid. So mindset before money, and I would refer you to the Zig Ziglar water pump story where he talks about the, the importance, he used the analogy, of consistent action over time to achieve your goals and to get your success. Um, there's only two things that you can do to generate business. It's invest time and or invest money. That's it. Either you work at something or you put money into something or both. 
There's no third alternative. You can't just create it uh, by, by wanting it. You can't just create it. It's true that mentally you can create it before you start, but then you've got to put in the time and or money to turn that into something of value. And that real estate is a contact business and it's a numbers game. More people you contact, more money you make. More problems you solve, more money you make. It's a numbers game. We've got to track our numbers and track them regularly. And your come from is critical. How can you help other people? As I said, um, who you are, you can uh, have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. So how can you help other people should be your focus. Who are people that need your assistance? That's what we're looking for. In real estate, if you're a real estate agent or an investor, you want to be the solution to all things real estate. You want people to call you when they have a problem. And if you solve the problem, you get paid. That's how it works in real estate. So you have to think about what do you do that creates value for other people rather than just how you make money for yourself. That's the challenge of our business. And so the, the title is usually the problem and probate is often the solution. So what does a probate problem look like? Grandma or grandpa left me the property. I don't know what to do with it. It's not in my name. Or my siblings and I are fighting over the property. I get this one a lot. Mom and dad died, left it to us. We're fighting over it. I think there's a will, there isn't a will. Mom said, dad said. The property's supposed to be the trust, but it wasn't, is another common problem. I dealt with one of those just recently today, as a matter of fact. And we started a probate, but got stuck in the mud. Couldn't get the paperwork done. The judge didn't like this. Uh, now I have an objector, somebody's suing me. So that's what the problems look like, and the solutions often look like this. The solution grandma and grandpa left me the property is to help them get into probate, maybe lend them money or advance the money to pay for the legal fees or the service. Siblings are fighting over the property, find a good probate litigation attorney. You can't just give them any attorney or any litigator, you want one that specializes in probate. Um, property is supposed to be in a trust. Uh, there's a solution that can put it back in a trust. It's a 850 petition, otherwise known as a Hegstead petition. So the fact that it should have been a trust and wasn't, isn't defective, doesn't mean it's determinative. It can be put back in trust, often is, but can be very expensive or not so expensive, depending on who you go with. And then we started probate, got stuck. Oftentimes I help them, they work with an attorney they know and like and trust, but he's a DUI attorney or a civil attorney or divorce attorney, but he's not a probate specialist. And you really want, you really need a probate specialist to get through the probate legal quagmire that's the probate system, particularly in California. So you can learn all those possibilities, or if you find a problem, you need some help, call me. I talk to agents and petitioners, investors all the time. 90% of the time, I can point you in the right direction. You don't need to use me. Sometimes you need to sell the property and list it. That's where I come in and can help you. So feel free to reach out to me if I can help in any way. So today I want to talk about, let's see. Uh, first off, let me just say, anybody have any questions before I jump in any further? I normally want this to be very participative, um, and we, we ask questions uh, because we know other people have the same question. The more you participate, the more money you make. So if your camera is on and you unmute and ask a question to you, contribute to the group, you're going to make more money. That's how life works. Who, before I go further and get into kind of the meat of what I wanted to talk about today, who has a question or comment so far? Anybody? No. And did I see Nancy Zalata joining our call? Longtime friend, Nancy. I guess I just joined recently. Welcome if you're there. Okay, so feel free to jump in the chat box if you have a question. Uh, if you're watching us on the live stream on YouTube or Facebook, feel free to put a question there. I should be able to pick up your calls there as well. And so today I want to talk about really what I'm going to call marketing basics. I want to talk about two basic concepts. I've been in real estate since 1986. And for all the coaching companies I've gone through, nobody really explained what marketing is as it relates to real estate, whether you're an investor, wholesaler, or an agent, these mathematical fundamentals apply in any business. Number one, impact. Impact is your effort times your effectiveness. Or another way to think of it is how many people you call on the phone times how effective you are on your average phone call. So you look at this mathematical equation and say, well, if I wanna make twice as much money, I can either double my effort, make twice as many phone calls, or I can double my effectiveness, be more effective on my phone calls, call better people, better scripting, better, 
better uh, mindset, better delivery, or some of both, right? You can do one or both of those to increase your income. But you got to do something to that equation. You either have to do more or better. Does that make sense? Is there any other option besides more or better? And I'm talking about effort being the number of calls you make, the number of doors you door knock or, or door, uh, drive for dollars or houses you drive and or mailers, all kind of being the same. And effectiveness is how effective you are when you communicate to somebody. So the scripting on the phone call or at the door, the type of marketing piece you mail to, how many, how many mailing pieces is effort, how good the mailing piece is, is your effectiveness. Does that make sense, everybody? Or did I lose everybody? Yes. Who was that? Sharon. Sharon. Does that make sense? That if you want to make more money, you have to either have more effort or be more effective with the effort you have, correct? Yes, that's right. Okay. Now, most of us want to make a lot more money than we are now. When I started, I wanted to make 10 times what I did the first month. But I couldn't work 10 times the hours. Just there weren't 10 times hours a day. I work eight hours a day. There's only 24. I got to sleep. I got to eat. Maybe I could eat less, but I got to eat, right? So you get to a point where you say to yourself, well, I have to be more effective. The quality of my input has to be better, right? Maybe who I'm talking to or how I talk to them has to be more effective. That's impact. The other is your effort. You can break that down three ways. Your effort is your work times the technology you're using or not, times the people you're leveraging or not. What do I mean by that? Your work is whatever you do. You show up, whatever you do. Technology would be the tools you use. Your phone, do you use a headset? Do you use a dialer? Do you use a computer program to get your data for you to speed it up? What technology you're using will leverage? It could be a force multiplier. Now, everybody has some technology, right? These days, everybody has a cell phone, even poor people in, your, in India have cell phones. So what technology are you bringing to leverage your work? And then third is people. Uh, you know, I use virtual assistants, uh, some in the Philippines, some all over the world. I have about six different. The higher paid ones are good at what they do. They get 25 in an hour, 15 an hour. I hire agents to drive, show buyers property. I do things that a lower price per hour than I make to leverage my time. But I also pay some virtual assistants, $4 an hour to do data pulling and cross-referencing and merging and those things. And I always look at the more people I can delegate work to, as long as I'm effective, the more time that I can spend on the effective work. And the way I think of it, I try to think of myself like I'm an attorney that I would bill out at $400 an hour, right? So if I have $400 an hour times 2,000 work hours a year is about $800,000 gross revenue. That's what I'd like to do in the next 12 months. So to do that at $4 an hour, I can't do $4 an hour work. I can't do $25 an hour work. So I leverage myself with people. What do you do that's below your income category that you're doing that you could leverage with somebody else? And maybe you're, you're struggling to make $15 or $20 an hour, but you can leverage some of your work at $4 an hour and then put that time into the $25 an hour work that's where you can leverage your time and make more money. So take a look at your work and then multiply that by your technology. What are you using? How are you using it? For example, right now, I'm talking to 33 people by virtue of technology. Now, I have a video camera and a microphone and I have a second computer. I have a high speed. I have a bunch of technology. I've invested a couple thousand dollars to do this and assistant and some marketing. And I've been doing it for a year and a half. There's a lot invested to be able to do this. But I did it so that I can talk to 32 people at once, now 33, plus whoever watches afterwards on YouTube at the same amount of time. That's the goal of all this, is to be more effective. So here's what I would say to you. Look at these two formulas, and what can you do to increase your impact? Or what can you do to increase your effort. And I don't mean your effort by working more hours. Generally, that's not the answer. Generally, people are stressed in by working more hours, they become less effective and make net less money. I work about 40 hours a week. In fact, this week less because I have 
Jewish holidays I'm off. But I work in intense 40 hours. When I, when I work, I'm all in and I work. Uh, you know, my wife came in about something. We're, work, uh, uh, we're hosting a little party thing on Sunday. And I said, I can't deal with it now. I'm, this is work hours. I'm like Michael Jordan at the basketball game during my work hours. You can't bother me with non-work stuff, right? So again, I don't care if you're a wholesaler or an investor or a realtor um, or you're looking to buy a property on the side, the time you spend, you want to make more money, the solution, or I'm sorry, the input is your effort and your effectiveness. That's what's going to generate revenue and wealth for you. And what you do during that time is multiplied by whatever technology or systems or services you use and the people you work with or delegate to, to help you make that more effective. And if you don't, you're kind of shooting a rifle against an enemy who's lobbing artillery and has airplanes and missiles and all that. The business world is very competitive and you're not giving yourself the tools with which to be as effective as you can be. So that's my perspective of marketing. I believe here this is in the solution for people who want to do more business. If you're an investor, I always say you got to see more deals. The investors I know look at 100 to 150 properties for every one they buy. The investors who don't buy property look at five or 10 and get discouraged. But you got to look at about 150 to buy one. How do you do that? Technology and people. You have to have an agent bring you deals. You have to have technology to sift through them quickly, right? Okay. So I've done a lot of talking today. I got to think you guys have some questions or is this topic just like nobody's really interested and I really picked the wrong topic to talk about today? Give me some feedback. It's interesting. Okay. To, to share, are you an agent or investor? What do you do? No, I'm an agent with EXP in the Bay Area. In the Bay Area. Do you need to make more money or are you doing good? No, I need to make money. You make more money? <laughs> some money, money. All okay, money. So what's your strategy? What are you going to do? Well, what I've been doing this week is I've been um, sending out neighborhood reports to my farm. I have a farm nice. of, empty, of empty nesters because inventory is so low. So I'm sending them a market report and I'm handwriting it. And I'm also asking nice. them if they would like a CMA of their own property in that. So nice. I'm sending those out this. I sent out 10 yesterday, 10 today, 10 tomorrow. And then I'll follow up with the call next nice. week. I, I don't even know what it is you're doing, but you get this good. So I'm just, the vibe is just great. Can okay. I help you, but can I help you double, make twice as much money for the same work? Yes. Just do 20 of them instead of 10. 20 a day? Instead, just do 100 instead of 10. 100 a day? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> That's all it takes. It's just, you know, that's the, the Grant Cardone 10X theory, right? He's, his whole theory, if you, if you haven't read the book, it's amazing. Uh, if you haven't and you can't afford to buy the book on Amazon, there's an audio version on YouTube for free. If you go to YouTube and just put Grant Cardone 10X, there's a seven hour version of the audio book for free uh, on YouTube. But basically his thing is, if you wanna make twice as much money, shoot for 10 times. You might not get 10 times, you might only get eight times, but because the problems you deal with at a higher level, trying to go up a little bit, you kind of you kind of hold on to the same problems and try to work around them. But if you're trying to think about how can I do 10 times as much, you have to rethink everything from scratch and you open up new possibilities that make it actually possible. And so I'd urge you, number one, to, to if you want to make more money, I'd listen to that audio book you, until, you, until you're done with it. And second, I would say, yeah, legitimately, what would it take to do 100 days to 10 a day? Because if 10 is good, 100 has got to be better, right? Yes, yes. I will think of doubling it to 20 because I'm handwriting this stuff to make it look very personal. So. Well, I'm not sympathetic to the handwriting part. Maybe the cost of the printing or the cost of the paper or whatever. I get there's a cost, there's a budget. You know, we don't want to spend more money than we have. And I don't be wasteful with paper and stuff. But if you say, well, I have to, I have to sign a hundred things. Oh, well, I mean, but what if you, what if you made 10 times the, the revenue a year from now, wouldn't that be worth handwriting out a hundred oh, things? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So I got asked a question here. Um, let me just jump down real fast. Um, 
from Holly. What's what kind of be the best prospect for probate you enjoy cold calling? So Holly, where is it that you do business? I am in South Florida, and I'm with EXP as a realtor as well. What part of South Florida? Uh, Coconut Creek, so Broward County, right on the Boca uh, Palm Beach line. I used to live in Boca. I lived there for two years. Oh, nice. I was in um, Aventura in July with Grant Cardone. I'm going back in December. I love South. I want to move to South Florida. I either have to get a divorce or convince my wife to come. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So <laughs> I love South Florida. I miss it. So, you know, I think the thing I was saw people I, about. I'm a good attorney. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, an ex, it'd be an expensive move to Florida. <laughs> I tell people the day my wife says yes, I'm going to grab her. We're just going to fly to Florida. We'll figure out all this stuff later. But that's how anxious I am to get out of California. And I love Florida. So, Holly, what I, and I know she said that you enjoy cold calling. And I always tell people, you, marketing is about being a thank to who you are. If you enjoy talking on the phone, I would talk on the phone. If you enjoy talking in person, I would talk in person. I enjoy in person. This is the next best thing for me during COVID that I came up with as a solution. I didn't really have a better solution than, than doing a large Zoom call. There's nothing wrong with phone calling, but then the question gets down to, are you talking to enough people to achieve your goals? If not, well, what if you talk to 10 times as many people? Um, right. I, I try to have the rule that my job from eight to five is to talk to people about real estate. And I try to push everything else either to somebody else or outside that time period. So I have things to do tonight and what I would call administrative work, uh, contract, paperwork, this, that, other stuff. And I and I'll look at it after five and I'll either delegate or do it myself. But I try to be on the phone as much as I can. I, and I also have a principle for me, which is as long as I feel like I'm moving the relationship forward, I'll talk as long as as I want to, um, because the goal is the relationship, it's not the number of calls. Um, I, I kind of keep up the Mike Ferry system where they track how many contacts you have a day or an hour. And to me, that's kind of counterproductive. I want to talk to somebody, I want to build a relationship, I might go longer than might be you know, acceptable in that system. But you have to find your own system that works for you. Uh, and the other thing I would say, Holly, I teach a class, the 11 ways to get a sale in probate. And it's not that you do 11, but you probably need two or three at a minimum different ways to attack probate business. Um, and then it also depends on, are you a newer agent or an active agent? Uh, the number one overlooked or the fastest way to get a listing for an agent who's been in business is calling your current uh, client list, your past client list, and finding those who don't have living trusts and encouraging them to look into that and then referring them to a trust attorney uh, along the way. And that in turn can generate some real estate business for you. Go on my YouTube channel and then go through that in detail. My YouTube channel is Bill Gross EXP. And I'll talk, I'll talk there about how to generate um, from living trust from consumers. But there's 11 ways, and so I, I can't go into all of them today. Um, and then Holly at EXP, I do a class every Monday morning, 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, be glad to go into detail with you and some coaching that that helps you, okay? And I say for any agents interested or investor, if you have questions on how to build your own business, feel free to reach out to me, set a time, and we can do a one-on-one -on -one phone call. I'm glad to help people kind of get their business plan set up if that's of a, if that's of a, of a help to you. Okay, what are the questions do you guys have? I went through the marketing basics. Hey, Bill, I had a question. Yeah, go ahead, Lenny. Hey, well, first of all, thanks for the Zoom. Uh, appreciate this. Um, so as an investor and, and wholesale, what do you think would be the best advice if I wanted to start uh, marketing to probate? Um, sure. What what area geographic are you in? Um, I'm in the Long Beach, California area. Nice. Um, you know, I'd love to talk to you. I work with investors like you, um, you know, regularly. Um, and I would say that, well, what do you do now to generate business? What are you doing for your, rather than adding probate, what do you do now to generate the investments that you're getting? So right now, just uh, we're attacking absentee owners, out-of-state owners, <clears throat> and uh, doing that through uh, tax, uh, like tax blasting and code and calling too. Okay, so I might if I, if that's already working for you, it tells me that text blasting and cold calling are are activities that you're good at. I might just add in the probates or pre-probates to that mix. So if you're using 
prop stream or property radar to get your data? Who do you use to get your data? Uh, go through a title company. So um, uh, the title company won't have pre-probate um, or probate data, but you might want to look into um, prop stream or um, probatedaily.com. And there they sell the data of there's probates, which are cases that are filed, and there's pre-probates, which are people who've passed who cross-reference to property ownership. And what you might do is, and I know investors who do this, uh, they use PropStream because you can do pre-probates and you said uh, uh, distressed properties, I think you said tax sales, a couple others. They'll screen three or four different things and so they'll be pulling in the probate screen into that database and, and, and add that into their mix as far as texting and calling, if that makes sense. And then, and then as far as, the, I guess, PropStream and the, and the data that it has, <clears throat> is that like up-to-date information? Because I know i have doing a little research. Mm -hmm. um, do you go to the court house to get the information for the probate or uh, is, that, is that not that anymore? I don't know. Yeah, you don't need to. In LA, you don't need to go to the courthouse. We have multiple data sources. We have the in some remote counties, uh, uh, you need to go to the courthouse. But in LA, for sure, it's much cheaper to buy it. I mean, it costs twenty bucks to park at the court, uh, and in a month, um, you spend a fortune. But you can buy the data for ninety nine dollars a month and get all the probate filings. And then there's the pre probate filings, which are different. Uh, but again, that's just death. Those are obituaries cross-referenced to home ownership. So, um, but yeah, you shouldn't need to go to the court if you're in LA County. Now, if you're in another, if you're buying property out of state in some more rural counties outside of the United States, outside California, then you need to. But in, in LA County, you should not need to, to go to the court for anything. So, so PropStream would be then a good source then for, yeah. is, there, is there any other uh, sources other than PropStream? Um, Probates Daily does sells pre-probate. So if you guys are, are, are already bringing in that data to your texting in your system, you might bring in that and see how many more, you know, uh, um, leads that generates for you. And if you can track them and figure out which ones are pre-probate and see if it's worthwhile. But I would think if you're already cold calling and you're already texting, why not add in more, sort, more data to contact, uh, you know, putting more, more, more bullets in the same machine gun, why not? That's how I'd look at it for you. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'd love to talk to you, Lenny, some more uh, if you have time. Uh, I work with investors like you all the time and maybe can coordinate a little bit as well. I have other agents on my team that might do some door knocking you know, with your people or whatever. So let's maybe we can talk about that sometime. Awesome. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Um, who else has a question regarding generating business? Product? Let's focus today on generating a new deal. I'd like to get a new listing today. Who's up for a new deal? Say I. If you want to make more money in the month of September, still it's the twenty what third. I if you want to like another Rare. commission check you haven't I. thought about Can we? in September, say I. I. Okay, good, good. We're Can right we spot. pitch opportunities? I. We have Let's do that, William. You can because okay. I, I know if you're bringing if you're bringing up to you're bringing some money. So bring the heat, William. Go yes, ahead. yes. Thank you, Bill, for having me. Um, so I have an off market uh, pocket listing in. On the Wilshire Corridor, it's a Whoa. three bedroom, three and a half bath. Yeah, it's really nice, Bob. Really nice build. Um, three bedroom, three, either three or three and a half bath, twenty five hundred square feet. Um, it's going for one one point six nine. Uh, the comps in the area are going for two million or plus. One sold in the building for one point nine. So you're walking in with equity. This is a good opportunity to avoid a bidding war and go straight to escrow. It's, it's, it's a nightmare for buyers because it's just so competitive. Right now with off market, with this one, you don't have to worry about that. The seller calls me every day, he's ready to sell. Um, so yes, you know, let me know. If, uh, and for the agents on here, it's paying a good commission. We'll, we'll talk uh, directly about that, but it's very in incentivizing. So please um, let me know if you guys have any buyers or anybody has anybody that may be interested. I'd love to help. Okay, sounds like a plan. Um, do you have the details? You have, you have a setup sheet, or how? If they want this, how will they get a hold of you? Um, yeah, uh, you can. I will put my information in the chat. Um, you can call me directly 310-863-1589. But I'm going to put the website and my information in the chat, and you can call me directly if there's any interest. Standing. 
Um, thank you for sharing that. Always looking for properties to work on. People come here looking for deals. Um, who has a question, problem, or challenge we can work on today as a group? Make some money together. Anybody? I'll give you a hint. If you don't have a problem, you're not working hard. If you should have a problem all the time, you're working on. Right? I have a question. Okay, go ahead. She called you to the uh, courthouse for the overbid. Hey, Oh, I'm sorry, Renee, going to the courthouse for overbid. Yeah, for the overbid, how much um, do you have to put down? Is it 3%? So, uh, Renee, you're asking about specifically probate they're, they're court cousins. confirmation uh, overbids, correct? Yeah, so exactly. they're, they're cousins, but. Um, okay. Uh, so, so um, just to recap a little bit before I answer the question. So, in probate in, in uh, California, there are some that need court approval, there's kind of a, su a subset. Out of, out of 100 probate sales, about 10 need court approval to sell the property. And the process there is they go into, they put the property in the market, a buyer agrees to buy it and waives all their contingencies and, and, and puts their money down. And then they file for a court date and they show up at court. And basically what happens is the estate or the seller says, we wanna sell the property, please approve our sale but anybody in the world can walk in and agree to pay that same price plus 5% plus $500. But by doing so, they're waiving all contingencies and they have to show up to the day with a cashier's check for 10% of that minimum bid. So for example, if somebody had sold the property for $500,000, subject to court confirmation, so a buyer agrees to pay 500, the buyer waives their contingencies, the buyer raises their deposit to 10%, then the state files a petition to have the court approve it. it, takes about 30 days. They publicize that, anybody in the world can see it. I look at it, show it to my investors. And an investor can walk in the door that day with a cashier's check, but you have to be willing to pay at least 525, 500. So the state's gonna make an extra $25,500 if that uh, new price goes through. So the answer to question is 10% in a cashier's check made out for the state. Hey, pick this up. Pick up that mess. Pick up that mess out before. Okay, okay Nuri? Mm -hmm. okay. Good. Thank you for the question. Who else has a question on probate or real estate in general? Anybody else? Bill, I was just looking in the EXP calendar for your Monday class. Uh -huh. What's the best way to find it? Because I'm not seeing it in the calendar. Should be in the probate group. It's not in the calendar. It's it's in the go in the workplace to the probate group. And okay. Sure. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Sure, Nate. You're in from Austin, Texas. That's right. So it shouldn't surprise you that California is the hardest state for an, an, uh, an estate to sell property in probate. And Texas is the easiest. Should be a surprise. <laughs> it's it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just one of those things. Um, so you you don't have to know as much as we do. I know there's a process in Texas that's different. It's a little more streamlined, but there's still some issues to pay attention to. So I'd love to have you on that. Yeah. And Nate, yeah. are you going to ExpCon? You know, I'm not signed up for it. I was thinking about it, and then. With everything going on, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So right now, the answer is no. Okay. Well, love to have you there. If you're there, I'd love to meet you. Yeah, it'd be great to meet you too. Cool. And and those two sites you said probate daily. So I'm pulling that up, and it's probatesdaily.com/foreclosuresdaily.com. Foreclosures daily, I think, is the name of the company. Yes, and they have they have probate data on theirs. Another place you can go is if you go to my website, uh, vlaprobateexpert.com, vlaprobateexpert.com. And on the far right, I have a uh, probate and trust resources and then the drop down for probate data sources. And there I have a link to various sources that I find. Foreclosures Daily is the name of the company, correct? And they have a probates daily is, is their division or whatever product. So if I'd sign up through, for any of this through your site, 
Do you get a benefit for it? Because I'd much rather I do don't, that. but you will. If you go to Pro Foreclosures Daily and use uh, code BG3005, you'll get like a 20 or 30 percent discount and a free ebook written by Kevin Sales on probate. So I have different coupon codes people have given me. I don't get a penny from any of this. They, and they offer it to me. And I say, I don't really want it. I, I'm not in that business. I'm in the business of selling houses. I love it if you need help referring me a, a listing. Love it if you need help co-listing a property. Uh, but uh, I don't sell I don't sell data. I just give it out to friends like you guys. Awesome. Okay? Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate this. My pleasure. My pleasure. Cool. Uh, other, you don't have to be with the XP, though. I guess above all for anybody. Nan asked the code. The code on foreclosures daily is BG, like my initials, Bill Gross, BG3005. And I will put that in the uh, chat, BG3005. And um, yeah, it's a uh, foreclosures daily has, and just to go back track a little bit, um, he was asked, somebody had asked about the um, probate data, they have pre-probates. There were a few vendors that do that. Pre-probates are properties where somebody's died and they own a house and they cross-reference the two. And so they're not quite yet filing for probate, but investors love them. And then if you find those and they need to go to probate, uh, bring it back to me. I can help you negotiate or navigate through the probate process. I'm not an attorney, but I have some services that can help make it really cheap for you as an investor to get them approved to sell the property to you. So part of the value add I do for investors is that. Okay. Second shout out. Nancy Zalata, how are you? I've seen your cute son grow up. I used to say he's one of the cutest boys in the world, but now that I have a grandson, your son just got moved down a notch, I'm sorry to say. I think my grandson's <laughs> cuter. But nice to see you. Um, anybody else questions, challenges, or problems before we wrap up today? No? What's the courthouse looking like, Bill? Is it is it um is it back to normal? Uh just you know, considering COVID, is it um just in terms of um court cases being seen and you know the probate side? So in terms of the volume of cases, they're going through as fast as ever. Okay. There's less people in court. I just talked a little while ago to somebody who was in court today, and she says she's able to get in. Now, technically, you're not supposed to be able to get into the courthouse unless you're on calendar for something. But I don't guess if you're a cute lady in the regards <laughs> a man, I don't know how she got in, but she told me that she just told them she's there to observe. And they let her in, and she's gone there a few days in a row now, which is great. Um, if that works, I'm all for it. So, uh, but generally, I don't go unless I have an investor buying a property or I have a listing that I'm selling there. Um, so I, I you know, have the right to be there. The court would tell you you should come in via video, but you have the right to go in person. And um, I rather go in person and meet the attorneys and see the process live. So, but to answer your question, I can't host meetings and have a guest come and meet me at court like I used to. So we're still waiting for that to happen. I think we're a ways away from that happening, to be honest. But I don't have any special insight on that. Bill, thanks for your time today. I have a quick question. I have a client. She was interested in a probate, obviously, because the price was below market. But when I was reading the listing agent's notes, they were saying, you know, they wanted an offer as is and like waiving all inspections. That that start scared me a little bit for her because, you know, without a thorough inspection, you really don't know what you're getting, right? And is there any recourse after a probate sale? If you're buying it, is it just done and you get it as is and that's it? Generally, yes. Generally, it is as is. Now, if they know something and they don't disclose it, uh, they might be liable. That's a different, that's a, more of a civil question. That might be fraud. Right. Um, and so... Um, it's a complicated question. Let me give you a complicated answer. So when you buy the property as the first buyer and it's a probate, or if there's no court confirmation needed, you're going to use standard car forms, right? So you're a real estate agent? Yeah, I'm a broker. And who are you with? My own S. Curtis Properties. And do you use car forms in all your contracts? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and you're in California? Yes. Yeah. So what I'd say is you're going to use standard car forms. The seller is exempt on certain documents in California because they're a probate, but 
they, they're not allowed to lie. They're not allowed to hide material facts. Nobody's allowed to do that if they're aware of something. If they know somebody died in the property, if they know somebody's living there, if they, they're obligated to disclose what they know. Um, uh, but when you go to court and overbid, you're not entitled to that. What's interesting, people don't know until it's too late, is when you go to court, all you get is the court order. You bought the property, usually it's as is, price, commission, buyer, seller, that's it. So uh, depending on how you buy the property, it depends on the contract. If you talk about overbidding, um, however, that said, some brokers don't know the rules. And when you overbid, they want to make the buyer sign all the car forms. I think as a buyer, that's good for my client. I think it's bad for the listing agent, bad for the client on the selling side. But some brokers, and I was just involved with, I don't want to name the company, uh, Keller Williams. I shouldn't do that. I wouldn't insult anybody, um, my former broker. But um, they don't know what they're doing, so they require these forms that give the buyer a bunch of rights of inspections and walkthroughs and things like that. So it really depends what the contract that you agree to is. If you sign up front before court confirmation, it's whatever car forms you have give you your rights. If you buy it at court overbid though, and the listing agent's sharp, you might not get any of those rights at all. You have to do it ahead of time. I will say many times you're able to inspect the property before you bid on it. There'll be showings, or you can work out a deal with the tenant to get in the property and, and do an inspection if you need to. So your question is correct to be concerned about, but sometimes you can find ways around that. Yeah, I was hoping maybe they could get a contractor just to go do a quick, you know, um, walkthrough with them. But it was the listing agents were pretty shrewd. They were saying as is. I said, do you have any reports, the receipts for repairs or anything? They were like, wow. nope. And so the, you're saying they don't have to uh, supply a TDS or an SBQ usually in these situations. So it's just kind of like a lot of times if they're not living there. They can just say, oh, we don't know, we don't know. And you know, this the buyer is just kind of taking a bigger risk. Correct. If they don't know. Now, if they know, they're obligated to disclose. Right. But how do we prove that if they if they weren't living there? There you, how go. Do you, there you go. So, yes. you know, I've had <laughs> cases where um, for example, the gas have been turned off five times in the prior four month period. Hmm. And it turned out there was a leak in the gas in the house that was dangerous. And yeah. it required repair all the way out to the to the sidewalk. And this, they didn't know about it. Well, how can you not know about it? You'd you know, uh, had it repaired, you know, after the seed passed, somebody called the gas company and had it repaired four or five times. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where uh, you have to be careful. But mm -hmm. if you as, a, as an agent can figure out how to get in the property, get your inspection done quickly, uh, you can you can hit off. And oftentimes probate properties are complete rehabs or teardowns. Those are the yeah. closest ones to go through, obviously. Hello? Uh-huh. Hello? Oh, no. Uh, Rama, you had your hand up? You're yeah, muted. I just want to thank uh, Bill for his guidance uh, in my first probate listing. And uh, with his uh, blessings and guidance, I'm able to do it. And I want to thank him. Uh, whenever I called immediately, he has lifted my phone and guided me and encouraged me. Because of him, I did it. Congratulations. Yeah, I just want to thank you wholeheartedly. You know, I, I have to tell you, Rama, I, I, uh, last month, this is the, only the 23rd of September. In this month, I took three listings. I opened four escrows while taking already off uh, two, three, four, five days for religious holiday. A sixth day was a fast day of this month already. And I had a grandson this month, or actually yeah. last month, that we had a celebration on, going on in the middle of all that. And somehow I managed to handle all this property, close a couple deals. The blessings have been overwhelming. And I, I really believe, I'm saying this to everybody, I really believe because I help other people. I don't know that I, I'm not charging Rama a coaching fee. I'm not charging a referral fee. I'm glad to help when I can. Now, sometimes I can't. Sometimes I, I have, I'll say, look, you need somebody to help you list this. I can offer to co-list it with you, but I'm glad to when I don't need to just to help because I know that I get paid back infinitely more uh, just for helping him. So thank you for sharing that, Ram. I really appreciate it. I mean, you motivated and because of you, I took that uh, probate 
and you beautiful. encouraged me to take it. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank well, you thank so you. much. Thanks. Thank you for sharing that with the next person. I appreciate thank it. And those you listening are struggling, just know it just takes one deal to get that ball rolling. Have the courage to step up, or if you're scared, you have a problem, call me. I'm glad to try to help you guys and figure out how to get, how to get it done. So, thank you always. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay. Any other question? Looking forward to connecting with everyone on Instagram. Home so who's home solutions? What is that all about? Lenny? Is that an uh, inspection or what do you what's home solutions? Oh that, that that's uh that's the company investor wholesale. Yeah, I just wanted to Got put it out there in case you know anyone want to connect online. Nice. Okay, so Lenny putting out here's Instagram. I'm not really an IG guy, but um, I know people are so at home solutions on the IG. And while you're there, you'll see some pretty girls in bathing suits, which I'm not supposed to look at, so that's why I don't go there. Um, <laughs> but I, I'd like to explain to my wife why I'm watching Instagram when she walks in my office. That would be a, a tough one for me, so I, I just stay off of it. Um, okay, who else has a question, challenge, problem I can help with before we wrap up today? I just wanted to, to make a, um, I'm sorry, I got a call just on uh, uh, Mrs. Curtis's uh, question. Um, one thing you do want to look out, which can be problematic and a uh, risk for the uh, investor or buyer, is when the, um, the the estate doesn't have a copy of the lease agreement or the rents. Um, I just went through a probate and um, see what happens is, you know, God forbid, if you have to evict that tenant or have to, you know, do some extreme measures to get them out. And this is strictly directly from my investor. He told me, he's like, look, there's no way that a judge will rule in my favor if we don't have a copy of the lease and the rents. I don't care if the tenant ain't paid rent in years. We will lose because there's no evidence that any, that, that there was no evidence of any agreement between the former buyer, a, a, a tenant and owner. So you want to be very uh, diligent. Uh, when you're dealing with units and when the purchase is for investment purposes, that they have the lease in place and you get the estoppel certificates and you verify those rents. Because if you get in a situation where the tenant does not move and you got to evict them, you're going to have a tough time getting rid of them if you do not have a copy of the lease. So, and that's from my investor, that's from his personal experience. So, Take it how you want, but you know, he was adamant, like it ain't gonna work, William. So you want to look out for things like that. You know, you, it, it almost is impossible to get them out if you don't have the there lease. you go. See, I, I I was just on the phone with an attorney <clears throat> on another matter earlier today, and it's just <clears throat> I think the city of LA said that we will end our eviction moratorium one year after this the state declares an end to the emergency. That's what the like, attorney just told me. The well, R September. It's in at the end of the month, right? That the state will determine the end of the emergency, and the city of LA's eviction moratorium will end one year after that. And, wow. and Tashia says cash for keys is the best way to get them out. Uh, a lot easier said than done, because there are people who nowadays it used to be. You know, they might be entitled to thirty, forty thousand dollars, but if you give them twenty five thousand, they would move quickly. Nowadays, they feel like they're partner in the property with you. And I get tenants who say they want two hundred thousand dollars to move out because they know the property is worth more than that, more by that amount when they move out. What? And uh, I'll tell you, I'm gonna make a prediction. I've been making this prediction uh, wildly. I'm gonna tell you that you've not heard of this crime, but but the way things are headed, if it takes another year, for the eviction moratorium, I'm going to predict on this call right now, publicly, there'll be a new crime. It'll be like a mafia thing. If you think about like the Mexican mafia killing people for drugs, like how much how much drugs are they killing people over? Fifty thousand dollars worth of cocaine or marijuana or whatever it is. That that if you have a property that's worth two hundred thousand dollars more with somebody out, how much do you think you have to pay somebody to get them out illegally? That is inevitable. It's going to happen. We are headed right there towards really that kind of mob rule, where, where they'll just be guys who will go to the front door and just say, we're moving you out tonight. And you'd be too scared to say no. And I know, you, we all know people who would do that. We all know people who would do that for about 500 bucks. So just know that's where we're headed. This is, we're in uncharted waters on this eviction thing. It's gonna get very scary if things don't turn around. I don't know, I don't, 
I don't see any other solution uh, other than that as, as being where we're headed. And it's, I, I hate to say that I'm ashamed as a almost, almost lifetime Los Angelino, uh, I'm almost ashamed to say that's where we're headed, but I think, I think that's where we're headed. So, so that's you're my prediction. I understand you're clearly, but Bill, you, I'm just a little confused because I was under the impression that the moratorium is going to be up at the end of the month. You're saying that there's a state ordinance and after a year after that? No, the opposite. That, 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 that uh, Governor Newsom had extended the state emergency through September 30th. Okay. The city of LA has a ordinance that says the city of LA's eviction moratorium will end one year after the state of emergencies lifted statewide. So we got another year, pretty much. I just got well, from the attorney, pretty high press attorney tells me that's what that's how you understand the law. And that's if, <laughs> that's if they that's if they end the, the emergency, right? The end of September. There you go. There right. You go. So, so and, and and you don't know if that's gonna happen. There you go. Thank you. It can go on. I don't be negative here. I, I'm gonna uh, be negative and they're gonna be political. I'm just trying to read the tea leaves and say where are we headed. But I'm gonna tell you. There'll be for that kind of money. There'll people who'll do anything. There, you you know it. We all know somebody like that who will do anything for that kind of money. So that's where we're headed. I hope it doesn't get to that point. I hope that people are smart about it and, and lawful, and, and nobody wants to live in a world where that happens. But um, it's a it's a tough it's a tough time to be an investor with a property and renters. And, and uh, now on the flip side, I will say that there's a lot of sympathy for landlords. But the reality is, every landlord in California with a tenant not paying, his property went up by more than the tenant who didn't pay. I mean, it, it, and I'm not saying that's right, but I am saying, let's be honest, that if you have a, a you know, 10 unit property and you ten, uh, tenants didn't pay you $1,000 a month uh, and you lost you know, $120,000 of rent, your building went up last year by $200,000. Now it might be hard to make the mortgage payment, but the truth is the properties are worth more by more than you lost the rent. That's we all know that's true too. So it's hard to be on one hand, it's hard to be sympathetic and uh because it does get down to right and wrong and do we have a lawful society or not? But that's definitely uh in the cards. So um anyhow, that's my prediction. Uh you know, who knows if I'm right or wrong. I'm maybe I was just drinking we forgot this call. I don't know. <laughs> but that's just my that's what my prediction. <laughs> if things continue, it, it's gonna get it's gonna get difficult. But in the meantime Hey Bill. Yes. Any chance that LA County will follow LA City on extending the moratorium? No, who knows? Now we're getting into politics. I don't know. I don't know. I look. I, I, I was a political science major in college. I was involved in politics right out of college. It's been. I had, I've been a student of history. I think I know as much about politics as anybody who's not a full-time politician. And we are seeing things today that I never imagined possible. We are living in completely uncharted territory as far as politics. So to answer your question. Anything is possible. Nothing would surprise me right now. And I don't say that negatively. I mean, more my last two years than I have in a long time. I've been fantastic two years of my career, making, doing great in my business, loving what I do. I feel sad for a lot of people being hurt. I feel sad for the younger generation that doesn't yeah. see that they're losing their wealth and their opportunity uh, right. being taken from them. I, I, that breaks my heart as a father of a young daughter and now grandson and, and son-in-law. Who are working hard that that part hurts but i'm not saying that be negative and then i'm not using that not to work hard the opposite i'm making more money uh, i'm working harder uh, because of it and i think we all should this is the i'll tell you this this is the best opportunity to make money in my entire career right now for everybody there has never been a better time to get started ever there's never been more money available to invest in real estate ever there's never been more opportunity ever than there's right now and if you're experienced, there's never been more new people who need your help and guidance ever in this business. So I'm not negative at all. I'm just saying, keep your head down, man. <laughs> keep your head down. Go out at night. It's going to be ugly. But uh, that's why Nate's in Austin, Texas, and so we're here in California. So. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, challenges? I'm going to wrap up here in the next two couple minutes. I'm not seeing any. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, I have one quick question. First, just one comment. It's wild to hear the difference of getting a, a tenant out because here oh. it's significantly. <laughs> oh, yeah, my good friend Annabelle Pacheco bought a multifamily in Dallas Market outside Dallas, 
And, you know, she had lower uh, below market rents and she you know, gave them notice at 30 or 60 days or whatever it was, remodeled the properties, re ran it up, made a, made a million and a half dollars in about a year and a half on a multifamily property. In LA, you can't get those people out with a bulldozer. That's, that's wild. I was curious, in your time of doing the probate, is there any sort of seasonality to it or no. it's constant? Yeah. Um, I mean, look, like all business, there's a, you know, in California, things slow down the holidays. In the middle of the summer, things slow a little bit sometimes. But um, uh, no, this is, uh, you know, when I work, I get business. When I don't work, I don't get business. If I don't have new listings, I know it's so they didn't work. In, in August, I go, oh my gosh, I need some listings. I worked hard. I got four li or three listings in the beginning of September and put them all in escrow. So it's just, you know, uh, I, I just think that there's, there's opportunity everywhere right now everywhere but you gotta put the work in okay okay i'm gonna wrap up there's tahisha she's she, she showing us all her checks show us the checks again each one of those is a million dollar check she made on a deal last month no just kidding <laughs> these are all the things going in the mail today the, your so 10 proud. things that you, i'm so proud tender, of my effort the 10 reports you did today the 10 handwritten reports you did Okay, so you got time. So it's fourth. Yes. You got time. Do ten more right now, real quick. We'll let you go. <laughs> okay. Let her go. To do 10. And tomorrow I'll do thirty. Okay, everybody. So she has to report back next week on her hundred per day. Thank you, everybody. Have a powerful week. If I can help, give me a call. A call, text, email. Uh, we do.